Okay, so welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, we have been dealing with LRNG and so forth uh, for the, this fall, and we're kind of extending out and thinking about other things, but still want to look at a few things around LRNG. Um, Chris Sloan has been doing something with now comment and collections and research mm -hmm. for um, a couple few years. I don't know how long. Um, and so he and I met briefly recently and um, have a have cooked up something that we'd like to talk about that might include other people um, as widely as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and with us, so quickly introduce yourselves because I don't think Ashley and Jessica know each other too well or uh, much. Jessica, do you want to start? Mm -hmm. um, actually, what do you teach? Yeah, what do you do? We yeah. have been on calls. You have been on calls. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. But um, I teach English and language arts in the Bronx at Pulse High School, a transfer school. And I'm doing connected learning with Paul. And Don Reed is gonna introduce herself here in a second as well, if she can hear us, good. Ashley, go ahead, say who you are and what you've been up to. Um, Ashley Hutchinson, I teach English uh, AP Lang at Rose High School in North Carolina. And I teach journalism and AP seminar. And um, I hold it for the Tar River Writing Project. Um, doesn't, doesn't have a whole lot going on now. Um, I've been doing the um, badging with LRNG in the summers for the last three or four years. Both you and Jessica are on the assessment team. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and you have a paper coming out Friday? That's exciting. How often do they come out? Uh, every three weeks. Huh. Cool. <coughs> and Christina Cantrell is with us um, in the background. She'll jump in once in a while, I guess, um, from the National Writing Project. Don, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dawn awesome. Reed. I'm in Michigan. I am <coughs> a high school teacher. Um, at Okemos High School, and I'm a co-director of Red Cedar Writing Project that's connected to Michigan State University, which is about five miles away from where I teach. And Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Sloan, and I teach at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's a high school, and uh, I teach similar things to Ashley. I teach AP English language and then also um, journalism. We have probably put more emphasis on video production and uh, that kind of thing, but we are coming out with a print edition ourselves next Friday, I suppose will be when it'll be out. You should send them to each other. Right. Physically. <laughs> yeah. Chris, one of my, um who used to be editor-in-chief of our paper actually was uh, super into graphic design when he was with us but really was more interested in uh, in video production mm -hmm. he came to be a guest speaker in class yesterday um, he's at SCAD getting ready oh, okay um, what's SCAD Savannah College of Art and Design oh cool yeah we actually send a number of kids there from our school believe it or not yeah. He's, he showed us like different like locker room designs and stuff was the big thing he, had been working on. he did an internship this summer where they did like the videos that play on like a, a screen that runs across all the athletes lockers somewhere I don't know I'm not I'm not good with the sports teams but it was neat to see yeah so topics tonight um I do want to, I, I'm going to start backwards. I, I mentioned this <laughs> earlier, but there, there are some, it, it might be worth going in and looking at the, um, assessing some playlists. It's up to like 39 at this point, and I don't know whose they are. Um, I think some of your students might be in there now, Chris. Yeah, there's anyway, a couple of them. We should reserve a little bit of time to look at that, or you guys tell me which way to go on this. What a cute dog. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and um, 
And then also uh, quickly mentioning uh, what I, we christened last week and they have been calling um, Connected Fridays. Um, I have set up the front page with little orange boxes around any school that has published this week. You, we can, we can talk, you can talk back to me and say that's really too tiny a frame, maybe expand it to three weeks. That's a question I have, I don't know if that's helpful. Um, and then um, let's start though with, um, with your idea, Chris, what you've been working on here and our idea together to around now comment. Does that sound okay? Quick round, um, is there anything else you would like to bring up? Or what, yeah, what do you want to catch up on? Uh, well, I'm okay starting there. Yeah. But I definitely want to loop back into talking about uh, the Connected Fridays too. Okay. Cool. So Chris, what is a now comment collection? Where did the idea come from? And then I have a, a way in also that bit is built on Don's um, Raising Your Voice playlist. But okay. What's your- Well, um, you know, I, um, like a lot of English teachers, are, I'm interested in how my students annotate. And well, first of all, if they annotate when they read for academic kinds of things, and um, so them thinking about that process seems to help them as readers and writers. And so, you know, we do that on paper. And then uh, on Now Comet, we do it digitally. And the, the idea is, uh, it's actually, right now I'm using it, we'll be using it in the next day or two, starting to use it, um, is um, Now Comet for what in AP language terms, but a lot of the AP classes is um, like a document-based questions or in my um, particular class, uh, it's a synthesis essay. And basically, students Chris, try I, to create- can I, I, I had some questions. No, 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 I, oh. I wasn't rushing you. I, um, I was um, trying to distinguish between, there is AP language and AP literature, is that right? Yeah, there's AP English language and composition and AP English literature and composition. And which one are you teaching? Both Ashley and I teach the AP language, which would be like when you're a college freshman, that's like the intro to comp class or freshman comp or the class that tries to teach you to write well for a, a variety of different audiences and purposes, as okay. opposed to like literature, which would be more literary analysis. Okay. So this one um, asks, at, at one point, you know, there's, there's a task on the AP exam every year where students have to synthesize a bunch of sources into an essay, which I really like because that seems like a pretty typical task that we ask people to do both in school and out of school. And so uh, what we're doing with Now Common is essentially creating a collection of sources that students will build themselves or perhaps with peers, um, both peers in their school and maybe even peers in other schools, to, um, to write an argumentative essay. And really, I'm structuring it like a problem solution kind of essay. So that's the collection is would be where my students are going to put articles and where I can see and where they can see and where they can talk about how they annotate those articles. It's kind of in a nutshell. Um, jump in folks if I jump in too fast and tell me to shut up. But the, um, the uh, oh, I, I did want to quickly say they, they can, I don't think they have yet done this, but they can also embed video or put like, um, uh, graphs and charts and images in as well, right? And and I take those. Mm -hmm. I also I also kind of have mentioned this to you, but I think it's going to be an interesting process to decide when we had something also as the teachers. Like you know, you all of your things come from the left. Why don't you read this one from the right too? I don't mm -hmm. know, but. 
that's part of the process that they're going to do because you know part of all good argumentation is counter arguing other people's positions and you know you have to understand their positions and research those positions if you're going to counter argue them so yeah, and just, just checking also, is there something magical about the number seven or what's... Well, the... technically that comes from um, the AP task itself. There's usually like seven sources and they have to choose three. Okay. So, um, and, and seven like... seems like, I don't know, it's a nice number. <laughs> it's, per <laughs> it's perfect, I think. Right, right. it's a prime. Uh, it has <laughs> some kind of, you know, mythic connections to it also, so... Ashley's been trying to ask a question. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, like, one of the ways for them to show they're engaging in the synthesis task is for them to use an opposing perspective. Like, that's something that's a pretty easy signal to the AP readers that the kids are putting the sources in conversation with one another and not just summarizing sources, is to see that they can, they can show how to address a source that doesn't necessarily agree with their perspective or with another source's perspective. So, Ashley, do you, do you teach, do you teach toward this test too or? I do. Oh, cool. And I'm, I've been a reader for the exam uh, most often for the synthesis question. So that one's my favorite. Well then Ashley's the expert here. And then with AP seminar, there's also a synthesis question. Uh, they have to develop their own, they, they just get the sources for that one. They don't get a question. They have to develop just a, a new perspective that about a topic from the sources that isn't necessarily addressed. The perspective isn't addressed, but the topic is. Hmm. Um, and then also for AP seminar, they have to put together, they have to do a research paper. They do two, actually. They do two performance tasks that they work on for an entire semester. Oops, we lost her. Yep. Well, she'll come back, I think. She said she got a new computer. Well, as a transition, I would say, yeah. well, it's, can, it's not can just you... AP English language people. I think this is real. We're talking about argumentative writing. Yeah, but you know what? It's kind of cool to be able to say we're doing both, right? <laughs> For sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't want it to be like an AP talk or something. What, what was she talking about, the seminar and the research paper? And so there's another, the AP program has a thing called the AP Diploma now. And if uh -huh. you take a class called AP Seminar, it really is like a prepping you to do an in-depth research paper that takes like all year. So that there's a class called AP Research, and that is all about doing one big study, like an empirical study. Uh, and so it could be qualitative or quantitative, but it's kind of like, you know, what you do for a master's thesis or, you know, any kind of thesis kind of thing in a college program. So that's the AP research that she's talking about. Huh. So it's very, if I taught AP research, it'd be, I'd be using now comment, you know, in similar ways, only there'd be a lot more than seven sources. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you think about if you, you, we've all done theses and stuff like that, you know, we read all kinds of stuff and try to synthesize it. Yeah, so. Make, make your case, though, for um, how doing, is it, what, good, she's coming back. Hi there. You look like you're back on your phone. Can we, can you hear us? No, yeah, she can. Cool. Oh, nice. Hi. Hey. Cool. Sorry, my computer so, turned off and won't come back on, so I'm on my phone now. Cool. Um, I was going to ask Chris, I was going to ask you this, and then anyway, I'll ask both of you again. So um, is there a case for doing the kind of, you know, gathering sources and doing, well, Chris, you do, you do, posts on your voices kind of frequently around a topic that they choose. What is your thinking about that? How does that prepare them for the language exam? Um, well, I mean, Ashley, you just got back on, so I don't know if you want to chat about that. Um, I, mean, I haven't used youth voices for them, for my lane kids to, to do any posting. Okay. 
So I'll, I'll give it. Have journalism kids post on YouTube. Yeah. Chris, you give you give your comment, and then Ashley, let's come back to you with a more open, like, how do you prepare your kids for? It? Yeah. So yeah. So to just get to this, I think um, you know, doing a research paper in the past um, was oftentimes a fairly solitary process. You know, the scholar goes and, you know, you know, you go to the library in the old days, look at a card catalog and get books and things like that. And you'd read a lot and synthesize a lot. And maybe, you know, you'd have times to chat about your research. And um, one of the things I, I noticed, I was talking to a guy who is, gets a lot of grants for his research in the hard sciences. I think he, he researches the Huntington disease, which is like Parkinson's. And he's at the end of his career and he said, you know what I notice now about the grants that are going out there is they're going out to multiple sites. So it's not just one person's lab, it's multiple sites. Mm. And his thinking, and you know, where I was going with it was obviously research is becoming more social. And so, you know, how does that prepare my kids for an AP exam? Well, um, reading um, research and then trying to put it in their own work and then having conversations about it seems like pretty good preparation for, that's the, the thinking that you want people to do is like articulate some thoughts about this article and have some kind of conversation. And Ashley talked about that when you, the AP readers are looking for that some kind of conversation that happens and that can be seen sometimes when we look at other perspectives and, and counter argue and things like that. So every time I think my students read an article and then polish it enough to write about it in a public place and then have conversations about it, seems like pretty good preparation for a test, but for a lot of other things too. So one of the things that I really, really like about the AP seminar hey, course, is Keep going, it yeah. kind of, uh, extends on some of the things that we do in Lang um, with the two performance tasks. So one of the things that they have to do is develop a research question um, with a group. So they are like, I mean, that's something that they have to do collaboratively from the beginning, even with just developing what they're looking into. And then they have a 30 day window where they each write an individual research report. So each one takes a, a different lens. So they have to examine what the stakeholders would be from each of their lenses. And they come together and do a, a team multimedia presentation um, on what they think would be the best solution to the problem implied in the research question. But they really have to take the factual evidence from each one of their lenses from the written research report that they've done. And what they're required to do in those research reports is re not make an argument there yet, but report out on what the major perspectives are from the major stakeholders. Um, and I find that that goes a long way toward not just having them you know, read in an echo chamber where they're just cherry picking articles that support what they already think. And um, I think when you have them come up with like text sets and you have them, um, you know, responding online and do whatever, um, having them deal with articles that don't just echo what they already think is really important because they have to consider those other perspectives mm -hmm. and even if they stick with their original opinion well at least they've learned how to deal with those other perspectives they've at least thought about them they're not just hearing the same argument over and over and over um, so i've brought like more of that into lang like i i don't i haven't done this in a, in a little while but um i used to have them do a research project where they started by like building a um like their own little Google site. So I had them like curate sources on whatever their research question was. Um, and they did a lot of work with just finding sources for a while before they even started to have a thesis of their own. Um, and they had to have at least three different perspectives represented. And that, that was for Lang, that was before I started teaching seminar. But I, I teach the Lang class in a semester. Um, which which semester do you teach it in? 
I, I have one section right now and I'll have one in the spring. Okay. So we run like August to January and then January to May. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've had to cut out some of the stuff just because of timing, but my, I actually teach one class I teach all year. I teach an AP seminar class in conjunction with Lang. So those kids I have for 90 minutes a day for the entire year. So I'm teaching them two classes at the same time. I, I but just, I love that you teach Lang. I, I like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting used to the logo. <laughs> But I, well, one of, the, one of the things you mentioned was um, text sets, though. Do you actually use that language with your kids? And do they mm -hmm. pull those together? And how do they do that? Talk, talk about that a little bit. Um, so they, well, they, they have to do that. For, I, I've done it in both classes. I've done it in seminar and Lang. Um, I think I use the text set language directly with the Lang kids. So, mm -hmm. Um, I, we talk about first developing questions under like kind of an, an umbrella topic. So it's like, what, what are you interested in? What are you into? What, what's your, your passion? And, um, they develop like a variety of questions around that one umbrella topic. And then once they get, they, they kind of just poke around and see what's out there. Um, so I have them do like, we just call it preliminary research, um, mm -hmm. where they find like, what are, what are the debates out there? in this topic that you're interested in. Um, and then when they settle on one, they start finding texts that contribute to the conversation. So we talk about like what, what informs the conversation about this topic? What are, what, what's the literature out there that, that people are talking about when they, when they have this debate. Mm -hmm. And so they curate those sources. And I mean, it's like, it's a wide variety. Like I, um, I've done it different ways, different times, but you know, sometimes it's a certain number of scholarly sources and sometimes it's like, what's, what's the hashtag? Um, you know, what, what is the Twitterverse saying about this? And they'll have to cite tweets and some, you know, it's just, they have to come up with a variety of sources and they have to have at least three different, um, kind of three different perspectives represented so that it's not that echo chamber. And then they just, um, I guess last time I did it, I just had them like post their sources to their website that they made. And then I had them, um, have other people with similar topics, like respond to that. And then eventually they get to writing a research paper. There's a lot of, um, s source curation that goes on before that. How do they, yeah. um, how do they keep, um, uh, how do they develop their sense of, um, like, do they develop a sense of categories of perspectives? Um, so do they start um, labeling um, uh, different perspectives and ultimately sort of clump them into three? Um, and then how do they identify that for you when you're assessing? Chris, so jump in on that one too. Talking about, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Ashley. I'm I'm kind of talking about two different things at once. So like with with Lang and with seminar, there's some terminology that's a little bit different. So like when I think about a perspective right now, I'm thinking about that from the seminar lens. So like in seminar, they have different lenses that like individual kids are assigned um so like one kid might look at an argument from an economic lens while another kid might look at it from a political lens and another kid might look at it from an ethical lens and there's going to be overlap between those lenses um so it's, they're not separate they're not completely separate from each other but a perspective is basically just like here it, it's like a claim basically um and it's not that they necessarily like label a perspective so much as they articulate a perspective i don't know if that makes sense but that um you know a perspective for us is a a complete thought so if their research question um i don't know like i might have a a group who you know their umbrella topic things they're interested in might be um uh, 
they might be interested in laws about drugs or something like that. So I had a group who decided their research question was, um, should we drug test welfare recipients? And a lot of the kids in the group originally were like, yeah, absolutely. We should totally do that. And then, um, you know, the kid who researched it from the economic lens found perspectives that said, you know, we'll actually spend more money on drug testing than we would save not giving people assistance. So that is a perspective. That's one of those perspectives. And the kid who looked at it from the cultural lens found that it unfairly targeted um, Native American populations in, in some states. Um, so they're all bringing their own, they're all curating their own sources for their own lenses. And then it's up to them to articulate what the perspectives are. What are, what are the arguments that different stakeholders would make about this research question? I'm so happy to have invited Ashley to guest speak tonight. Uh, <laughs> so, you didn't know you were going to do that, did you? I had no idea. <laughs> I just, but so, but, but have, I'm, I'm, I, that joke is um, my transition to try to think about how to bring some others of you in here a little bit. Um, and, and one point I wanted to make was that um, just to say, I'm sharing my screen now, am I? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is something that Kieran is working on currently. Like they, her students have read um, Macbeth and um, one of the lenses that she's, correct me if I'm getting this wrong, Kieran, but that she's asking them to look at Macbeth with is a psychoanalytic lens, right? So they're, they, they read another um, chapter of a book and now they're reading uh, Freud himself here, right? And um, annotating it in really very interesting ways, I think. Um, some kids are just struggling to understand the text and others are kind of going kind of deeply into it. So I was kind of excited with what, like the range of responses that kids were having on here already, right? Do you want to say more about that, Karen? Just to... um, <clears throat> yeah. There's uh, you can say a lot. I know, but go, sorry. there's a there are um, so for the students who are um, uh, trying to find something that they do understand, and then they're impulse is to say what it means is to translate it or paraphrase it um, into their own word so their response is um, sort of uh, basic um, not so much even really interpretation um, they'll uh, some of the replies that they get actually take their thinking um, deeper to you know, uh, or take the thinking of the group deeper. Um, and then sometimes kids who don't, um, who have that basic understanding, then they can read another student's post um, who managed, a student who managed to be critical um, of Freud. Um, and um, they'll uh, see that um, their impulse uh, the first one will see that their impulse is to believe, uh, to read as a believer. They'll encounter a reader who's reading as a doubter, and they'll uh, be, um, they might be surprised. I think you have quite a few doubters in the afternoon class, gotta say. Um, <laughs> but, which is I have fine. to say, you look yeah. scant when no, I, I was. I didn't mean to. I, just, <laughs> I was <laughs> telling the kids. Um, uh, you're gonna read this guy. He wrote um, this piece, uh, this piece of critical, of uh, not critical, but of literary uh, criticism, 104 years ago. And um, you're gonna read it, um, and um, you know uh, about Freud's 
um, ideas about um, penis envy and the Oedipal complex, you um, have a little bit of understanding of that. Um, this is your chance to slay this guy. You've been talking smack about him. So now find evidence. So, so that was kind of leading. By the way, um, somebody should study Karen and how she, when and how she interacts on these forums. So like the, these highlights are from Karen's originally in this case. She doesn't always do this, but then- I never did it before. Right. But, but, but finding a place to kind of jump in at different places is an interesting thing to think about as well. When does the teacher jump in? And Chris, you've done that too, right? You, you watch what kids are doing yeah. and jump in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. Um, I, I, is Don still there? No, it's okay. Um, so one of the things that a couple of our good, a couple of our, the students um, at Jessica um, and I are working with, um, have been working on this playlist that she has developed a couple of years ago. And the students it's basically go through a very interesting research process. They make an infographic here. When they come to this one, this activity, right, it's um, kind of um, relatively sparse, I gotta say. Um, and, but you, if you read here under the instructions, at least I can, I can kind of get what she's asking them to do. And what I think she's asking them to do is, is do what you, you have been talking about, finding different sources, annotating them, really thinking about them, and um, putting them against each other. Is Don is gone, right? Yep, are you, are nope, you, I'm here. Oh, you're here, you're here. Do you want to say more about that? I didn't mean to be critical, but um, yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, I think our, our um, even our collective way of thinking about what goes into the playlist and how we structure it has changed. So yeah, yeah, that's right. Revise and revise away. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. Is um, I think it um, the it's the Burkean parlor metaphor conversation of entering the conversation. Like you have to know what all the all when you enter that space, you need to read widely and then make sure you know all the different various perspectives around that or as many as you can and then enter the conversation so the yes. critical courageous conversations yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and what's the raise your voice category it's, it's a playlist yeah mm -hmm. okay do you want to describe it briefly or go ahead yeah. sure it's a it's um designed around student inquiry and research is the move for that so finding topics that people really care about and enough to research and learn more and synthesize and summarize it and then take a stand on what they believe. So, and research and annotating is definitely a part of it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so <laughs> this was my enter and one of my ways of enter. Oh, multimedia is, and, and expressing themselves with images and, you know, is it, large part of this too i think right mm -hmm. yeah. yep definitely so so the idea of synthesis in various modalities too um for two purposes right for um the intent of honoring and respecting various types of texts that we consume and then also those that we produce mm -hmm. and the impact those have uh, I'm, so so we get that Sometimes it, it, it ha it's said really fast, like now comment can include images, right? But what you just said um, is, a, is a more clear and thoughtful way to say it. So asking youth to find infograms, is that, am I using the right word there? Yeah, infographics, sorry, that relate to their topic might be a nice thing to ask them to do mm -hmm. um, as they're collecting stuff. Um, I was, um, I'm trying, I did set this up, but I think I have it. Yes, right. So um, our learner here, um, Emmanuel, right, 
is working through this playlist. I'm looking on his group page right now, by the way. Um, and he's posted a couple of times and he's up to, <coughs> I won't take the time to look at those posts. Um, and he's dealing with immigration, right? Coming around. Um, and then um, as he came to this one, I sat down with him and thought, oh, this would be a wonderful time to move into some tech sets, to kind mm -hmm. of look at, right, to have him pull together some different sources and to really annotate them. He's like, you know, a little frustrated that I'm slowing him down. He wants to get this done with, but anyway. <laughs> so that pulls us around to this proposal <laughs> that I did send out to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Chris, do you, as I, can you talk to it a little more? Or, or, yeah, go ahead. Well, um, <laughs> like I mentioned uh, before that, uh, <clears throat> You know they're they're going to have some um, inquiry question, and they're building some sources around it. So I started uh, the other day. We listed problems in their community. We listed them on the whiteboard, and you know there was no shortage. They the board was full of problems. Uh, and so um, what's coming up next is they will now uh, look up at that list of problems and uh, choose one and, and do a little research around it. Um, and that'll be the initial foray, just to get them to use now comment is just find one article because th they'll be logging into it for the first time. So let's just see if we can do this process of finding something and then um, you know, putting, uploading it to now comment. Now, uh, one step further is based on all the things on the board, um, there's this list of um, big buckets or, you know, like uh, categories, in other words, um, of things that basically covered everything that was on the board. So uh, the thinking here is that um, if they do, someone in Salt Lake City, <laughs> find some sources around immigration, they might start, um, a, they could have a group in now comment and in that group they could invite or it could be open for other people to also add some of their sources to the um, collection to the group's collection and you know that might be another way to have conversations around the things that they're interested in and and it would also be interesting to see what they do with the same set of resources you know you could build a completely different argument out of the same set of resources so you're looking at paul's uh list of categories there and wait I think did i looking at immigration wait did i is that what i i'm still yeah. sharing you okay mm -hmm. good yeah that, that wasn't mm -hmm. sure. right so i i joined emmanuel into this group um right and Jessica, you should talk more about this. It is worth noting that he was also interested in gaming, is that right? Or we weren't sure exactly, and we're not even sure he's going to stay with immigration. Is that, what's the update on that? Um, <laughs> he seems to be working on immigration, or he was last week. Um, He's also reading a book from South Africa, so there are lots of things going on. Or not South Africa, from Rwanda. Rwanda, that's what I'm saying. Hey, Rick, anything you want to add? That's what he was working on today. Yeah. Okay. So um, here's, here's the, let, me, let me just do a very quick tech, technical side of this. Um, I have made all of you administrators in each of these groups whether or not you use this this year that's fine it won't hurt i promise that you're there i think um, so what that allows you to do though is like we joined emmanuel into this group and then what emmanuel is able to do is to create a group collection right and when you go to group collection there is a box to say why and what you're doing here um and you can re rename it and so forth and then you can add different 
items that you have either commented on already or that um, you have put up on now comment yourself. I know we're skipping, we're saying a lot really fast here. I, I do want to stop and see where your questions are, maybe. Um, well, I have a yeah, kind of a ahead. practical question since my students will be starting this. Um, you know, so they put in, I think it begins with like, let's make sure we know how to upload stuff and, and format them in reader friendly ways and now comment, basically meaning like link to the original source, include the author's name, you know, put a citation in there, things like that, in addition to copying and pasting. Yes. Um, and so once you have a few things in there, then my question is how- By, by in there, let's clarify- In now comment. It, yeah, and it so ends up say, in your library. Yep. Yeah, okay. so let's say the student now has an article in their library that they've annotated. Mm -hmm. You know, so the next step that I think is something that uh, I always need to think through is, you know, how do they find each other? So I know that if they're in the same group of my school, they'll see, you know, there's like a feed, right, from my school So in now comment. Yeah. No, no, so I wasn't sure if I, so I'm not going to go into some, some things we hope, eventually okay. we hope that they'll be able to go to the immigration page and join it. They can't yet. What happens is that you recognize that they are, their topic is immigration and okay. you, and with an email address, you invite them to that group. Okay, Once so I make that, those connections. That's right. But even within a school, though, don't they they see each other's stuff in now comment in their in their library in the group's library? Because they're in that group, that's right. Right, so they can find those connections. They it's can. up to then. You're thinking the teacher then is the one who reaches across schools because we have a broader view as admins. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but we're working against. We're trying to make it as clear as possible. Yet understanding that not everybody will be doing this research necessarily. Anyway. Right. Yeah, so we're trying to figure this out together. Um, but yeah, so the next first step is to get the kids into the group. Once they're in the group and they, they might be able to see each other there. It, when you're in the group, you can add things to the collection, the group collection. So that's where they can begin to collaborate. Did, did that make sense, what I just said? So Can you say that again, how they collaborate? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to stay with the immigration example, right? Because there is already something. If I can pull it. C -F -G -H -I. <laughs> okay. Uh, there it is. So the immigration group. Um, Emmanuel is, uh, has decided to do something around immigration. We're not exactly sure yet. He's posted a couple times on Youth Voices about it. He's kind of, we think that's where he's going. So we drop him in. So we invite him, not drop him in. We, using his email address, we just drop his email address there and hit invite. And he ends up in this group. Whether or not he's in Youth Voices yet, he's, he's in the group. First time he goes into Youth Voices, he'll still be in that group. Is that part clear? Mm -hmm. um, what, what if yeah. students are already in now comment? Can they just be grouped around into mul different? So some, some, an administrator from a group has to invite you into that group. Gotcha. OK. That's now, what I need to know. And the reason to be in the group is so that you can either create a group collection yourself, which would end up down here, and then invite other people to add to your group collection or add to a group collection that already exists. Did that make sense? Did I say that too fast? Yeah. Um, Want to get to why pretty fast, right? The, yeah. the why has to do with um, that Youth are, you know, all the whys around collaboration are clear, I think. But the, the why also is that um, it's the multimedia thing, right? So that 
so that this document, for example, that Emmanuel has started to annotate, um, right? So he's annotating text here a little bit, and then here he's annotating a map, right? So that kind of multimodal annotation is possible. But what would be exciting is if he started to recognize, oh, there's the, there's that that kid from North Carolina, or there's that kid from Michigan or Salt Lake City, who's also annotating this text with me, right? Um, Did you say I could also annotate videos? Yes. Yep. Do they um, annotate like on the, a timestamp of a video, or? Yes. How does that work? Okay. Um, I could. Somebody else want to keep talking? I could look up something here. <laughs> so the or other questions or thoughts? Yeah. The question of, um, uh, from a student's point of view, mm -hmm. like how do I get other people um, comment? How do I get other people reading um, uh, my text set? My, um, uh -huh. like I'm annotating these things. I'm curating this. Uh, set and I'm annotating them and um, they're pretty interesting and uh, uh, is it like in Youth Voices where in part one reason to comment on other people's um, posts is in order to introduce yourself and maybe get comments from other people on your post. Um, so if a person is is curating a set and they don't have um people joining them so uh soon then do they feel like um why am i doing this yeah so uh, using youth voices for announcing that and for putting that out there and say hey come join my set my my tech set is one idea um chris did have you thought that through at all i mean um, yeah, a lot of those pairings take place physically in the building for many people too? because they know each other, right? I don't know. I my computer shut down, so I might have missed part of that. But um, the most uh, groupings that we've done so far have just been at building level. I haven't tried to reach across space and time. Um, like I, I'm seeing this. Um, I I do like Kelly Kelly Gallagher's article of the week. Um, and sometimes I'll pick like a debate topic from the, the article of the week. And then the kids have to gather articles that give perspectives that are not exactly the same as what's represented in the original article. Um, but they usually don't, usually what they do is they bring those other articles in to help them prepare for quick debates that we do some Fridays. Um, but I, I'd be interested in um, having them upload the articles that they find to now comment so they can all have access to everybody else's research. So it's not as like interest centered as just, you know, picking a topic that you're into, but it would be a good way to get kids exposed to, you know, what everybody else is finding and um, more perspectives than just what they individually have found as a, an alternate perspective to the original. Mm -hmm. So, I guess my thinking on it is right now like building centric. Like I'm seeing that as a a good way to use that tool. Mm -hmm. But if anybody else is on board with using those um, no, articles, uh, we... sorry. Yeah. So how how do those articles come out? Where are they? Uh, they're on Kelly Gallagher's website. It's uh -huh. Google Kelly Gallagher article of the week. Cool. So you so there could be a shared text set or a shared sorry collection, right? A group collection. <laughs> Get the right language here. Yeah. And, and like I, and I you would put that up and it and you could have them add to that. Is that what you're suggesting? Right. Like I use slightly different instructions than Kelly Gallagher uses because I do want them to like he hasn't just do like a, a reflection on the article, but I use it as a um, kind of minimalist research jumping off point. Um, so like I asked my kids to bring another text 
to the conversation. Um, hmm. So let, let's, um, let's move back from this, this grand idea that we will have 20 topics and five kids in each of those 20 topics from around the whole country. That um, but we can keep that vision in the future, um, especially if this is sort of your first time using Now Comet and doing it in your own building and your own class. Sounds like a great idea. So, right? I'm just, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can keep both things going. I did, I, I, because you did ask, I, I did want to show you. So, this video, I, I don't know if you can hear it, but um, has quite a bit of commentary on it at this point. And what you, what you do is when you click on the comment, it goes down here is where the comments are, right? Um, my, yeah, sometimes it takes a minute to get going when we have all, so many things going on. But um, what happens is you add, a, you add a comment, this pops up and the timestamp shows up here and you put your comments here. Um, just say, Usually, like, you end up being like five seconds too too far in. You really wanted to comment a little earlier, so you can um, add a different time here and you know chain, move it back five seconds and, and make your comment there. Um, so all that's quite possible. And what is nice is that it becomes. You'll notice that these lighter blue things. It becomes a conversation not just uh, commenting on the video. Um, sometimes it goes kind of back and forth a little bit. Like there's a we, utility in, there's a utility in having shorter comments in having thinner comments that may not have full, uh, it may have um, summaries, but without full comments. So, uh, we're pretty quick on the time here. What questions or thoughts could we address um, about this? How we might get involved is it? Yeah. And I think Chris, I, I think Chris, you and um, the teacher you're working with, is it Maggie? Sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And is Brian involved in this too? Like um, if I'll, he's doing youth voices. I'll ask him if he's doing now comment again this year. Okay. Okay. If you guys start that, right, and populate those groups as you do yourself already, then, you know, some of the rest of us might be able to join in. As mm -hmm. well, kind of, yeah? Yeah. And that Google Doc that I sent kind of breaks, hopefully makes a little more clear what I just said in this 15 minutes, too. Mm -hmm. um, shall we look fast at this? Am I still sharing? I Yes. Okay, I did change this around a little bit. Um, do you want me to pull this back out from a week or is that useful to say a week? I, do you understand my question? Yeah, go ahead. I, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure that we're all on it every week. I know. So, yeah. so I think it's helpful to be maybe two or three weeks um, just with everything that we cram into oh. our schedules. I don't know. So I'll, I'll just change this to three weeks. I'll do that. Yeah. I was thinking that in here. Um, I revised this. Sorry to go faster. I just don't, don't want you. I revised this here. Um, the, the Karen's kids monologues. Um, their Macbeth monologues are here. If you wanted to hear Chris Sloan's um, Shake uh, Othello monologues, they're here, by the way, still too. Cool. Um, but these are fresh, the Macbeth monologues. Um, and then I just pulled uh, several uh, categories and put them here. So if you hit American Creed, you'll get a lot of Don's kids. Uh, the civic engagement and social justice stuff, you'll get a lot of Chris's kids. But there is a, um, there's already an orange one around Chris's kids there. Um, sorry to, to get to this so fast here at the end. But does, is this making some sense that um, we'll sort of call it Connected Fridays and kind of organize this way? Mm -hmm. Are there any further thoughts on that? Actually, no, I, think that's, I like the orange box thing because sometimes, you know, my kids would start top left 
And yeah. even if a school, you know, it's a different school top left sometimes, even if they had written some two years ago, you know, they would just, they didn't always look at the date. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, Ashley, you, you're sort of new to this concept or you were, your kids might jump in and do this or. Yeah, this I'm going to yeah. have them do that uh, this Friday. Cool. They, I mean, they've made comments in Youth Voices before. They were, um, the timing was a little odd for them, I think, to begin with, because we were focusing on the uh, journalist bio and those were the only ones posted and they didn't know you know what to do other than comment on each other so yeah but so, i think i think they get the general idea now cool um again nothing absolutely everything right about commenting on somebody in your own classroom too right um but we're just trying to make other possibilities here too mm -hmm. Well, we got to a lot. We didn't get to LRG, but that's okay. Can yeah. I ask Are, one quick question about that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Are we still aiming to have portfolios through LRG? I'm just, I'm, that's I, maybe not a quick question, but it, I'm hoping it's a quick question. I'm just working on the end of my semester framing and wondering if it's something I, yeah. That's something you need to do. <laughs> so, we would love for you to. I, how are you feeling about it, though? Oh, it might be. Some points have been great. Some points have been clunky. So, yeah, I'm anticipating it to be clunky. So, <laughs> a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I feel. Sorry. I, I just feel I feel committed. I am committed to it. So I just wanted to ask that question. Why don't we um, start? That, or I don't. Next week might be a little tight. I don't know. But so at this point, we're doing prototypes, right? So if you can get some kids who might be interested to do it to do it, that would be great. That's what mm -hmm. I was going to say. That makes sense. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm just running. I'm, I'm in a semester class and we're going to run out of time because we'll yeah. end in January. So I'll, I'll, I'll play with it. So see Karen, what we can do. Karen's in the same spot. So yeah. Okay. Me too. I, I have some kids who I'll have next semester in journalism that I also have this semester. So I might end up working with that group more that that I'll have all year instead of the ones that are going to leave me in January. So for our purposes, we just want to learn how it works. And so if you have, you know, if it's not going to work, that's learning. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. That's true. Okay. So, yeah. I don't want anybody driving themselves crazy right like that's really important you shouldn't feel obligated and feel crazy because you feel obligated i feel like there's like giving authentic feedback to them and actually why it's hard and like even in a time frame where we were meeting every week it just like you know there's just like too much you know it doesn't work in that context i don't know I think we're really just trying to report. I mean, I think we have two things. There's reporting back to LRNG about you know, how the forum, you think about the forum connective system in school work. And then there's whatever work you all want to do together on Youth Voices. And that might mean that there's some portfolios created next semester, right? <laughs> and and that, that like we learn something then. but. I don't know. For this project, I just don't want anybody to drive themselves crazy. And so is anyone actually 
really confident they're going to have portfolios? Okay. No. Last June, we did we, uh, have portfolios last June. Okay. And so right now, the timing, Karen, you're thinking like if you did portfolios out of the current work, it would be January, right? Our semester ends early on the, like the 10th of January. Mm. Um, but they have such a nice uh, bunch of pieces to put together. Um, so I'm not sure. Again, you have some kids who could do this and others who it totally. would be too much. Right. So. Yeah, we have some kids who are ready. Yeah, we'll have um, probably four or five portfolios. I feel like if we had a few examples and then some learning like feedback that we know, I mean, and, and then that's different than what you guys want to do with this stuff if you want to do anything with it forward, right? Yeah, I started writing some feedback um, like there was a doc that you shared a while ago that you like January is sometime you're trying to have something together. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been writing down some notes from my end. Okay. So I'll be around next Wednesday still. We can, we can bring this up again then if anybody wants to. Um, but thanks for asking a quick question at the end Donna. <laughs> quick <laughs> i think we have all have a lot to say about it i just wanted to think through and ask that so i knew how to plan for my the end of my class because i've been shuffling things around to try to make it work yeah i mean i really feel like it is not going to work it's not going to work and if there are a couple kids that want to try it like hey is there any value in this uh -huh. and they're ready like Paul said. Yep. Really to help I, you understand how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rather than they're learning much. Right? So might be a way to think about it. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think they'll learn too. Mm -hmm. They mean the kids. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That was helpful. Oh. Okay. <laughs> As was the whole night, all of the good content, as always. Great. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank night. you. Take care. Good night. Thanks. Good night, everybody. I'd like to end the meeting. We're all. Do I stop the?